Okay, for this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the basics of painting within Photoshop or Photopea. Since they're so similar in each program, uh, I'm just going to work off of Photoshop. And a lot of the tools and smoothing and stuff is in the same area. So we should be pretty familiar with setting up layers, changing our brush settings, and our colors, because they're going to be very, very similar. So. Uh, we've already looked over the details in class, I'm not too concerned with that. We are essentially going to take our image here from our outline, which is what we did last time. So we took our photograph, we've outlined it uh, on this layer all by itself. And essentially what we're going to do is put together just a basic assortment of color here. So we're going to do our skin tone, we're going to create color within our eyes, our mouth, and then um, your hair, right? And then we're going to add a background. So if I open this up, this is just the final product here. You can see I can actually take away my hair, my skin, my mouth, eyes. I like things to be a little bit more detailed. Ooh, spooky. Um, so I'll create a couple more layers than maybe others would, but this inevitably makes it a lot easier to change things as you're working um, or after you've finished. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna take this and turn it off uh, so we're not distracted with that. And I'm just gonna drop it down here. So actually, you know what? Goodbye, we'll just get rid of it. All right, first thing we should do, create a blank new layer. And we're going to start off with our skin tone here. You can see on my outline, I accidentally painted in all of my teeth. So that's why they're looking so super bright and white. My teeth aren't that white in real life. Um, so our first layer that we're going to create, we're going to turn this into our skin tone. And this is going to be our basic layer of our skin. So our first layer um, it would be essentially like the mid-tones or the color that you're seeing. Uh, overall. So I'm just going to say for now, I'm going to call it skin. You can title it whatever you want, um, but just so that you know what color we're working with here. I'm going to go over and grab my brush. And if you want to make any preset changes, I would recommend taking your brush hardness to 100%. And then, of course, you can change the size of it uh, with your left and right bracket. Um, you can see there it's putting in right bracket because I was trying to make it a little bit larger. That's going to be huge. Let's make that a little smaller. There we go. All right. So let's figure out how we are going to choose colors. We could go in to our actual color block and kind of sift around here for whatever color we think is right. You can see how dull some of these colors are coming out to be. And you think like, well, that's not my actual like skin tone. And even over here, that's where the light is hitting my face. It's very blue. Well, that's not the skin tone that I want, All right? So instead, um, you could do a couple of things. You could grab some of the skin tone that is placed within your image and then maybe potentially move it up to brighten things. That works out pretty easy. Or if you really, really want to, um, something that you could do is go to the color Adobe wheel. Um, so if you go coloradobe.com, um, this will bring you up to the color wheel and I suggest monochromatic. You can choose some color scales in there within this region of orange. Um, if you bring them down, they'll get a little bit brighter. If you bring them up, they'll get a little bit darker. You could also go and do a Google search, just uh, Adobe skin tones. You can kind of sift through here. Once you find your image of skin tone that you want, um, you essentially can take a color, I believe, if I have the eyedropper. Can't remember if we could do this or not, but used to be able to use the eyedropper to select color. Now, yeah, I've forgotten how. All right, so once you have your skin tone, I'm just going to go in here, take a sample, and I'm going to bring that up, and that'll be just fine. Now is our time to start painting. And since this is the first portion, it's going to be the skin tone first, um, I could just paint 
all over the place and it doesn't necessarily matter because everything else is going to go on top of this color so i don't have to do a perfect job it's just areas where we would be outside of that color scheme um, that i would want to pay attention to Wonderful. Now it looks super crazy right now, but once we start adding in some of these other colors, it should start looking pretty good. So let's say the next set. Let's go in and we're going to do the hair. Follow the same things. So we'll grab our brush, color selector here. And There we go. So let's see how that looks. Where we paint with a larger brush, you can come back in with your eraser tool, kind of tighten that up a little bit. Also, if you use your eraser and shrink it down, we can start creating a little bit better look Gonna kind of there we go. If you're having trouble seeing what you're painting, you can always take the layer of your photograph and bring down the opacity. So it gives us a little bit better insight onto what we're actually painting. All right, now we're ready to move on to our next part so we can work on the mouth and the eyes here. Now the issue about, let's do the eyes first. So the issue with the eyes are that right now I have no way to select the color, right? So let's just take the skin, turn it off for a second with the eyeball. Let's grab our brush, color, and we can say, okay, well, somewhere in here, what color eyes do we want? Oof. The eyes can be tricky because there are actually two sections to this. One is that we have the iris. The other is that we need to fill in all of the white area. So we're talking about bringing the skin tone back. You may want to create another layer to be wider by. That will be just a little bit easier for you to go and switch over. Instead of having stark white, I'm just going to kind of bring that down just a little bit. It's not true white. Paint that in. You can see it goes under everything. And since I did a bad job, take my eraser and just clean it up. Now, of course, um, if you've got any uh, makeup or anything like that, or you're seeing like shadows and, and changes on your face, we can save those for the second part. Well, let's finish up the mouth here and we'll be all done. I'm gonna work on the inside here. You may want to look and see if you have some areas of your teeth that need some, uh, like your gums, if those are going to need some different colors. What I would advise 
is take a sample of your skin tone and just bring it down, make it a little darker. All right, lastly, before we finish this up, we have one more part that we need to do. So look over your layering here. Make sure there's not anything that you want to kind of add to it, take away. It's looking just fine. The next thing we're going to do is we are actually going to um, put another layer in here that's going to become kind of our background, or at least the start of it. And it doesn't have to be a color that you keep. It's just going to be a little bit of reference for us. And it's also going to make sure that we didn't miss any painting areas. So I'm going to create a new blank layer, title it just background. Going to switch over, it should show up your gradient. So just click and hold, and we're going to go to our paint bucket tool here and just select a wild color that you like. I'm gonna select this pink and I'm gonna drop it in there. And so that we see that, I'm gonna bring it up above layer zero. If you're seeing any uh, missing little areas of paint, find what layer that's on. If it's on your skin tone, take your brush, sample it and go back and fill that in. But if you don't see any of that wild color showing through, then you are good to save as, uh, and turn it in. So we got two ways we need to save. Don't forget, first way to save, we'll be going in and saving as a Photoshop file. So that PSD file, those of you that are using Photopea, and then to submit your work for the week, a JPEG.